Welcome back, everyone. And welcome to the stage, our panelists. We're going to talk about the power of purpose. I welcome Ian Ali, GVP Client Partnerships at Zeta, Pauline Malcolm Thornton, Chief Revenue Officer at Essence, Constance Knight, SVP Global Creators at Amazon Twitch, and Chad Hickey, founder of Giz Giz Givesly. Excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Juliet. Have a big hand for Juliet. I like to call Juliet our chief purpose officer in some ways, so thank you for the work that you do. Uh, so my name's Ian Ali, and I'm, I'm super privileged to be uh, joined today with our uh, panelists, who I think you have flown together, I did the math, somewhere close to 20, over 20,000 miles round trip to be here today. So this is obviously a big deal, and I want to find out why in just a little bit. The uh, the topic is the power of purpose, and that is a, a such a fundamental uh, subject, right? It's what guides us. It it's what informs why we're here, in our families, in our companies, um, in the in the world. And sadly, some folks don't uh, have that that answered. There's um there's an old thought-provoking question of if you had to think for a second, and I'll ask everyone in the room, what are the two most important days of your life? What are the two most important days of your life? Most folks will say the day you were born. Most folks will say the day you check out, right? The day you, you, you pass on. So morbid. <laughs> I gotta start off slow, and it's gonna, it's gonna, <laughs> Pauline, there's gonna be a crescendo coming up pretty soon. I believe in you. Get, let's get that drum roll ready. The second most important day of your life is the day you realize what your purpose is in this world. Why were you born, not just when were you bor born. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today, understanding, understanding purpose. Before we get there, I wanna, just introduce our guest properly. Pauline, I'll start with you, since you gave me a hard time there. <laughs> so, Pauline Malcolm Thornton, CRO of Essence Ventures. Uh, Pauline uh, joined Essence Ventures early in 22 and has already made quite a splash, uh, a huge, an immediate impact. Essence Festival, which I attended for the first time this summer in New Orleans, was the highest grossing revenue event in the history how did you do that so yeah, quickly? Good job. Uh, Pauline uh, wears many hats. She leads sales, sales development, strategy, account management, and sales operations. Prior to joining Essence Ventures, Pauline was the senior vice president of global sales at BEN. Prior to that, many leadership positions, including Disney, Condé Nast, and so forth. Pauline is a graduate of Baruch College with a BA in marketing earned uh, an executive management certificate from Harvard Business School. She serves as a board member at Caton Museum, which is LA's, correct? LA Children's Museum in Los Angeles. I had that, I had that written down right here. And lastly, uh, Pauline lives in sunny LA with her hubby and two daughters, I believe, right? Okay, great. So Connie, hi Connie. Connie, I, this I know by heart. You are a Dallas Cowboys fan like me. Yes, I am. Okay, right. That's, the day I die. <laughs> that should be right at the top of this list. Yes. Connie is Senior Vice President uh, of Twitch, uh, Senior Vice President of Global Creators. Connie has, I can't say the number, but a very, very large global team yep. uh, that she uh, leads. Twitch is uh, an Amazon-owned entity uh, that is really a live streaming platform. Connie leads efforts to improve overall, the overall experience for their live streaming partners. And you have a specific focus on serving diverse creators across the globe. That's more of a passion. It's not in the job description, but it's in every job description for me, but it's definitely a passion. Okay, thanks for the, the, the clarifying comment there. I'm just gonna go through these bios and I don't need any corrections for the rest of them. Chad, Chad, <laughs> Chad, Chad I'm, I'm looking at you, Chad. Whatever you say. 
Most recently, <laughs> we're having fun up here, aren't we? Right. <laughs> Most recently, Connie was at Instagram where she was a global head of video curation uh, for short-term content. Prior, Connie, you were nine years, I believe, at uh, YouTube. Uh, and uh, most re and uh, most recently, head of content programming. Connie holds an MBA from the Anderson School of Management, UCLA. And whoa, Connie also resides in sunny LA. So look look at that. Can I, can I also say I have two teenage sons who think I'm the coolest because I work at Twitch. <laughs> right, right, right on. Okay, Chad. Chad uh, is the founder. Chad Chad Hickey is the founder and CEO of Givesly, headquartered right here in New York City. Givesly is a for-purpose company built around the notion that as the world evolves, so should our uh, options to make, uh, to do good and make a social impact. Givesly develops creative ways to make uh, an impact by looking at everyday tasks and resources and finding ways, creative ways to give back. And I love working with you, Chad, and, and Givesly. We've done some great things together in just a short, short time here. Givesley uh, introduces a portfolio of ways to give back using, my handwriting is so bad, using Givesley's uh, B2B marketing efforts uh, by offering donations to partners uh, if they commit, uh, if they do a desired action or um, giving companies the ability to implement uh, uh, nonprofit support mechanisms in their ad campaigns, which we're about to do also, and we're gonna be talking about that in a little bit. Prior to Givesley, Chad spent 17 years in the ad industry. Most recently, Chad uh, led sales at Place. Prior, he was at uh, Ground Truth, where you, I think, grew a $100 million organization. Okay, we're going to jump right into it. Um, or I think we're done. We're going to have time for bios. So thank you all. <laughs> I'm going to roll, Ian. I have to say, I'm going to roll. I'm having fun here, Pauline. I like it. I like it. I'm not going to apologize for that either. So uh, I'm kidding. So why are you here? Pauline, I'll start, I'll start with you. You jumped in a plane. You got in here at 7, 8 o'clock last night. I saw you at dinner. You got there in time for dessert, but it was important for you to be here. You're all busy leaders. Why is this important and this notion of purpose important enough for you to get in a plane to be here? Pauline, please start. And how do you define purpose? It's such a nebulous term. What does purpose mean to you? Yeah. Um so thank you, Ian. Thank you, Zeta, for having me. Um, super excited to be a part of this conversation. And, you know, why I flew 3,000 miles uh, to be a part of this conversation, I think the power of purpose is incredibly important. You kind of started off with um, semblance of Mark Twain's quote, right? The two most important days of your life are when you were born and when you find out why. And... For me, in terms of a purpose and sort of like putting on my marketing hat of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and self-actualization being at the highest of that spectrum, um, it's self-actualization and leading with purpose um, is an incredibly, incredibly important to me. Um, and what sort of led me to my journey at Essence Ventures um, for those that are not familiar with Essence Ventures, it's a conglomerate of three, com a, a holding company, if you will, of Essence Communications um, that has been serving black women deeply for over 50 years. You may have been familiar with the publication. We recently acquired Afropunk, um, which is another festival that um, serves more of an alternative audience that's been around for 18 years. And then uh, we acquired BeautyCon and at the heart of all of those companies is really uplifting black communities and creating economic parity. And, you know, for me, in terms of coming to Essence um, six or seven months ago, was really around this purpose of helping to future-proof Essence for the next 50 years, if you will, but also, again, sort of redefining what black culture might look like in terms of creating that economic parity that is lacking with respects to both pay gap and wealth gap. And that's a big part of our mission. Um, and so for me, it, being a part of this conversation and kind of telling that story was incredibly important for me to 
to be here this afternoon. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you for sharing that and, and, and for being here, certainly. Connie, why don't I turn to you? Why are you here? What are you looking to get out of it? How do you define purpose? Yeah, sure. So I came here primarily because I wanted to learn from all of these wonderful subject matter experts. You guys have done an amazing job of bringing together people from different industries. And I felt that I could you know, get information, get frameworks, because I, I feel like I constantly want to grow in my life. There's always areas of improvement. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I connected with these folks. I also wanted to learn about purpose from my fellow panelists, Pauline and Chad, and also you, Ian. Um, so that was the reason I came here. And in terms of purpose, for me, purpose is that guiding light that is foundational and intentional throughout your life. It's uh, working towards something that is meaningful and valuable to you. Um, it's the reason you get up in the morning. Um, it's your, you know, guiding, um, you know, life decisions. It's your behavioral choices. It is your, um, the goals that you make. All of this is important to why you're here on the planet. And I think for me personally, my purpose is connected to the relationships that I make in my life and also the career decisions that I've made. It's important for me to do impactful and meaningful work. Outstanding. Thank, thank you, Connie. Uh, Chad, please, what does purpose mean to you? Why, why are you here? Yeah, so I'm here because I fundamentally think our industry has to change. Um, I think that my own experience as a CRO, um, I spent millions and millions of dollars on things that didn't matter or did not support communities in ways that they could have. And so purpose and what we create at Gibbsley is really making those things very turnkey for organizations because I think people have the intention to do it, but the day-to-day -day takes over and that's okay. And I live that world, right? I gave away iPads for meetings. I took people out to really expensive dinners and there's a time and a place for that. I'm not saying that there's not, but I felt there were ways that we could really incorporate purpose in everyday actions that could not only give us ways to connect with our clients, drive more business, but also help underserved communities. And so that's really what Givesley does um, at the core. And I think that the definition of purpose or you know, what I think purpose is has been summarized you know, really well. It is your North Star. It is incorporated in everything you do within your organization. It is not a task for HR. It is not a task for the person who leads diversity and inclusion or sustainability. It is in every decision you make as an organization, and it doesn't mean that it has to get there like overnight, and I think a lot of people sometimes get paralyzed by that, um, but it is something that once you define that, you know that, you live those values, everything else falls into place. That's outstanding. So Chad, I've got a confession to make. It's um, every time I hear your accent, it, it warms my cold New York City heart. Well, where, I, do, I do what I can. Where, 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 where did that gift come from again? The great state of Arkansas. Great state. Thank you, the great state of Arkansas, <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, so, Chad, you, uh, you left the, the corporate gig, super successful. You rolled the dice. You formed Givesley. Yes. Right? That was a courageous thing to do. And you put your money where your mouth is, right, in terms of having a, a purpose-driven uh, uh, approach. Why? Why did you form Givesley? Um, again, I looked at the opportunities that I had had as an individual. Um, I grew up in Arkansas where there was not a lot of opportunities. Um, and I wanted to create those for corporations. And I think that I was, I was in Italy after leaving after leaving the jobs that paid me enough that I could go to Italy. <laughs> um, and I was sitting there and I was really thinking about like, who am I? Like, what are my values? What is my purpose? And I was reading um, a book called The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F Word, if you've ever said, I won't careful, say that. Careful, you know, careful. That might not be uh, appropriate. So, but if you haven't read it, it's a really great book. And one of the parts of the book says, what are you willing to feel pain for? Because your true indication of what you want is what you're willing to feel pain for. Like if I say, hey, 
I want to be a musician, but I never practice, that's probably not really what I want to do at my core. And that really stuck with me because in that moment I started to evaluate, like, when was I most fulfilled? Like, when did I feel my purpose in my day-to-day -day business life? And I kept going back to moments that previous companies I had worked with had incorporated going into the community with our clients, giving back with them. And it was some of the happiest moments that stuck with me for various reasons. And I was like, how can I create a company that empowers every organization in our industry to do the same thing? Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned Italy and uh, Connie, I immediately thought about you, right? In your, in your global role. I remember uh, this summer you were Germany, I think Paris, Paris uh, Amsterdam. Amsterdam, and on and on and on. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about that because you have a unique global perspective that you bring to the stage. Mm -hmm. And we're very US centric, right? When it comes to purpose and, and, and how we, um, we, um, we stress that with our teams. What can you share with the audience from a, your global point of view of how other regions approach the notion of purpose yeah. and, and what lessons can we bring back here to the US? Yeah, so I love this question and like you said, purpose is nebulous and you know each person defines it differently. And I think that in an organization, purpose can be described or um, emphasized based on what the company's North Star is. And I think that um, they have to have that established North Star that it's, that's adopted by everyone in the company so that you're all rowing in the same direction towards common goals. Um, and I think that um, culture is, you know, in different countries it's different. It, you know, it's, it's language based sometimes. It is, you know, you have to think about like how does the, the, um, the region define authority? And I think, um, you know, culture can be localized based on, or sorry, purpose can be localized based on the culture in the region, and you have to keep that in mind. Um, I'll tell you a funny story. So um, I have two funny stories. So the first one is, oh. <laughs> the first one is um, I was working for a company, and they were building a product, and they did not go and talk to all of the different regional leads about the product before the launch. And so what happened was, they developed a product that um, used a term that they didn't have the word for it in Japan, in Japanese. And so when they ch went to launch it and implement it, they couldn't use it, you know? Um, and so I think that you really have to take the time to make sure that you understand what those nuances are in those different regions. Like for example, um, in North America and in Western Europe, we're very much, you know, focused on, you know, we're goal oriented, right? And then in Latin America, they have more of a propensity towards a fun work environment, um, very you know, lighthearted, light-spirited, but in a place like Asia, it's more focused on being cooperative, being more collaborative, order, things like that. And so you have to really make sure that you are you know, taking those nuances into, into mind when you're thinking through your North Star. Gotta be, but gotta be localized. Gotta be localized. Right. There's, um, there's an interesting stat it, as we're getting ready for this panel, kind of a sobering stat that I came across. It was a CDC study, uh, a mental health study, and they, one of the numbers that were, was buried in, in that study was, according to the CDC, only 21% of folks that wake up in the morning have a clear sense of meaning and purpose in their life. Think about that. One out of five people have wake up in the morning with a reason to jump out of bed. That is, um, it's sad. It, it, it's it's sobering. the The question is, how can we be an agent of change, right? To to reach out to those those four folks. Pauline, I, I love. Um, we had a conversation in uh, New Orleans at Essence Festival. And I remember we were in a large room similar to this. I don't know if you remember that. And there were maybe a couple hundred people in the room. Everyone was, it seemed, more successful than the next person. It was, it was a magical place. And I remember pulling you aside afterwards. And it, it was a, the, the, the audience was black and brown folks that are in our industry. And I remember looking at the room and I said, wow, 
if there was a way we could capture the magic in this room and take it outside of this room, out there, to inspire and to motivate and to give a North Star and to give other folks a reason, right, a purpose, a reason to get, get out of bed. It would be so neat if we could work together to figure that out. Do you remember that magic in the bottle? I, I do. I do remember that conversation vividly. And um, this was your first time, Ian, at Essence Festival. I'm ashamed to admit. It, it's okay. It's a, You're coming back. So it's all I got my hotel room booked already. I can't yeah, wait. You're ready booked. Highly encourage half a million people in New Orleans. One of the, I, I couldn't believe the scale and the, and the production yeah. and the content, but yes. So if you've never heard of Essence Festival of Culture, you're living under a rock. Because um, <laughs> it is the biggest festival in the country by per day attendance. Um, and black or white. Um, but essentially, uh, New York Times writer said it best this year that Essence Festival is sort of like a global reunion um, for, for, for the black community. Um, it's sort of like the cookout, but all is welcomed. Um, but in terms of like what it, why it's called Essence Festival of Culture, it really is intentional because our nightly concerts or you know, big sort of headliners are part of it, music is a part of it. But we have over 26 experiences, anywhere from like mental health to wellness um, to you know business, small business. Um, it really is programmed to sort of uh, connect and provide not just entertainment, but really enrichment and learning to be better than your to, to be your, your optimal self, right? And when you talk about finding purpose. Really, it's that it's all about self-actualization. So with Essence Festival of Culture, it is sort of programming to the fullness of your mind, body, and soul. It's a little loud. <laughs> yes. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so Chad, you uh, picking up picking up on that sobering stat of 21% of folks wake up in the morning with a sense of purpose and meaning. You. Uh, uniquely work across a ton of companies, right, at, 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 G at Givesley. And I'm curious, I'm going to put you in a spot a bit here, what, if you had to put a, a number or a percent of companies that you come across, um, how many authentically, that's the, that's the key word, authentically have that sense of purpose sorted out? Here's what I'll say, that percentage doesn't surprise me, you know, the 21%. Um, I think that companies are starting, that is definitely starting to change, so that's the, the, the good thing there. Um, but I think that companies need to be okay with going on the journey, starting the first step, and I think that the companies that are further along need to be willing to give them the space to grow and learn as well. Like, I'm not a fan of this presentism mentality that everyone is supposed to be as wise at this moment as they were when they were, you know, 18. Thank God social media did not exist when I was 18. I would, amen, not, amen I would not be sitting here. Um, but I think it is realizing that, again, and I think we've kind of talked about this foundational, like purpose is not just a volunteer experience. Purpose is not that your company made a donation to a charity once a year at the holidays are those components of purpose that can reinforce your corporate values? Absolutely, but it can't just be those things. You, you um, use a term that I haven't heard before. I don't know if you coined it, if you just claim it, but uh, purpose washing, I yeah. believe. What, what, what is that? Explain what you mean by that. And, and Well, I mean, I think it's giving some sort of signal that you support something that your actions don't back it up. So. I think the um, example that we've probably all seen, you know, and I'm a gay man, so this strikes, you know, to, to me, is all these companies that change their logos to rainbows in June, you know, on behalf of the gay community or queer community, thank you. Uh, but I would rather see these companies get out and like do something, like work with the Trevor Project, work with organizations like Gay for Good, actually do something to back that up 
don't change your logo. We don't change our logo. Like if people think yeah. that a gay founder is not supporting the queer community, then I don't know what to tell you. But like, I don't need to send that signal to communities that my logo is gonna change. That, that to me is like very much purpose washing. Can I just say, I love that. I'd never I heard that, that word I before. One. Yeah, exactly. And I want to plus uh -huh. one what you said, um, because even when you think about Juneteenth, the commercialization that has happened, I mean, Juneteenth ice cream, a company actually did that, which was a, f and yeah, <laughs> that was a faux pas, people. Um, and I would rather see that energy go into creating internship opportunities for brown and black communities. Um, more formalized sponsorship of, you know, you know, it's one thing to get people in the door, but how are you then paying it forward once they're there in sort of middle um, tier or mid tier, mid management opportunities? I would rather see companies channeling it into more meaningful and effective change than something that is more performative. Yeah, and, and I think if you are sitting in this room and you have a budget, do not respond to people like us, I don't have a budget. You have a budget. You have to think differently about how you use the budget. So that example or that, you know, that response is a lot of BS in my yeah. opinion. I always say like every Black History Month is so frustrating because just that month, everything is about blackness. And I'm like, it's June, I'm still black. It's September, <laughs> I'm still black. Like, please Never keep changed. talking to me. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, I'm looking at the clock, and I'm gonna get in big trouble if I don't land a plane on time. So uh, I, I wanna make sure you have time for some closing remarks. Uh, before we get to that, Chad, if you don't mind talking super quickly uh, about what we are about to do with your company for the very first time, uh, for a brand, Ed, I can't announce, right? But, but can I announce your name of your company, the agency? With Media Hub. So we're gonna be in partnership with Media Hub. Givesley and Zeta for the very first time to do something really foxy, and it has to do with a brand activating on, on purpose through your mechanism. Yeah, so one of our most recent products really was something we started to look at in the e-commerce world and the direct-to-consumer world, and if you think about um, what's been going on for now, a, a really long time where with D2C, there is a buy one, give one, or when you go to any sort of e-commerce checkout, Typically, you can round up to the next dollar and support some sort of, of charity. And as we looked at, you know, brands focus on the attention economy, um, one of the things that we started to discuss internally at Givesley was, why does that principle just have to live at the basket? Like, why can't there be some sort of nonprofit support in ad creative that people can incorporate into their ad campaigns for attention? And so the example that I like to, to use is you are watching a 15 second pre-roll, you can skip that at five seconds, you get some sort of message from the brand saying, hey Chad, you know, complete the full 15 seconds and we're gonna make a donation on your behalf to the American Cancer Society or whatever the brand chooses that aligns with their values. The brand wins because you're getting better performance in your creative, but then also you're able to showcase your corporate values in a way that's actually driving business. For us, everything we do is tying purpose to profit. So we typically don't work with HR groups, uh, you know, as a general statement, we're working with marketing and sales to say, okay, how do we give back to communities that also help you hit your business goals, because that it's my belief that the minute that a CEO sees, hey, you know what? We chose to incorporate this in an ad campaign, our performance lifted, and we gave $10,000 to this community that aligns with our values. Everyone wins, but also executives start to see, hey, this is how this can drive my business, which then funnels more money into those strategies. Outstanding, thank you. So we've got about 30 seconds each, if you don't mind, because of Chad. <laughs> Uh, Connie, why don't I start with you? What, what, um, what advice, what parting thoughts would you have for, for folks in, he, in the room and, and tuning in? Yeah, just really quickly, um, for those of you who manage global teams, like keep in mind those cultural differences because they will allow you to communicate better and collaborate better with your teammates. Um, for me, I would say for those watching and um, for the folks here in terms of you know diversity and creating um, diverse teams, and also even tapping into, um, you know, 
black targeted media or uh, black audiences. Let it be 24-7, 365. The younger you go, especially we've heard about the browning of America um, for a f many years, and it's going to be hap it's it's happening, especially with Gen Z, where half of Gen Z is non-white, right? Really make it 365, 24/7, a part of your general marketing initiatives, as opposed to just around Black History Month or Juneteenth. Yeah, I would say start the journey. Just start the journey. You know, don't sit and be paralyzed by, oh, I'm not this, I'm not that. Look, I'll be fully transparent. We're a small company at Givesley. I say we're small but mighty. Um, we are predominantly white. You know what I mean? And I could sit back and say, I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that I don't have racially diverse enough group, or I can sit there and say, how do I support those communities now while I work on that within my organization? So don't get paralyzed by the fact that there's always gonna be people that are gonna criticize, or you're not always gonna do the right thing, and that's okay, but like go on the journey and start it, because if you're not, you're behind. Right on, right on. On behalf of the folks in the room and those tuning in, with gratitude, thank you so much, panelists. Let's hear it. Thank you.